Antimicrobial resistance is one of the biggest challenges facing us, not only as an industry, but as a society. And we have to make sure that we're totally on top of it. We fully understand the relationships between our medicine usage and any outcomes that may occur. And also that we strive to produce what is effectively a world-class product that we can take to the rest of the, of the world uh, and sell it to the best of our ability. This was a difficult process. I didn't really have full confidence that this was going to work, if I'm honest, because of the lack of data, there's a lack of all sorts of uh, things that we needed, in, in, certainly in some sectors more than others. Uh, but as it's turned out, there's been some real uh, hard work and uh, heads put together in order to come up with some meaningful targets. As it stands, I'm very happy that this is now a real challenge for each sector which will deliver meaningful results. And the Targets Task Force has been a very successful um, operation. Now we have round the table the veterinary surgeons who prescribe the drugs, we have the sectors, so we have the industry and the farmers who will be using them, and then also very importantly we've got representatives from government, FSA, BMD, DEFRA, and that's crucial because they're there in some ways as equals, they're contributing and supporting the process rather than just telling everybody what they should be doing. And I think that's a fantastic way of working and it's been very, very successful as a result. The VMD has been involved in collaborating with the different task force members and, and we've been very much working to, to validate some of the usage data that the sectors have been collecting and see where we, where we can help them develop the targets and in particular develop the baselines. The, the recommendation to develop sector specific targets came about as part of the government response to the O'Neill review. Um, and we think it, we thought it was very important that the industry um, set their own targets rather than it being um, developed by, by the VMD. Different industries are in very different positions and, and it's understood that, um, you know, for example, reductions should, should be greatest where there is most, most scope for reduction and also that reductions should be sustainable, um, evidence-based and in particular they should be useful, useful to the sector themselves. The biggest challenges we face is trying to get all that data together from upwards of 50,000 beef farmers across the UK. What we've done in setting our target is to base that on our sales data we know today. Our next most important target is to start to establish a credible data flow from farm level up into sort of the national level so that we can make more accurate targets going forward and also importantly so that farms and producers are able to benchmark their medicine usage between their businesses. One of our key targets is to have a 10 milligrams per PCU antimicrobial usage on beef farms by 2020 or a 10% reduction from where we are now and our next biggest target is to establish that baseline as quickly as possible so that we can accurately determine those targets going forward. To set a baseline for antibiotic use within the dairy industry was perhaps easier than perhaps the beef industry because we could look at data available from some recording companies already there we also have VARS, which is sales data, which is produced by the Veterinary Medicines Directorate. So we could try and estimate from that. Every meeting, the groups got better about their interaction, sharing their knowledge and how we can all work together. That it's a very diverse industry with different systems and also we're not as integrated as perhaps the poultry and pig sector. So collating data and accessing that data can be a challenge. Whilst it is recorded by vets and on farm, that's often not in systems readily accessible to be used. One of the key targets that was picked on for the dairy sector was the use of high priority, critically important antimicrobials. These are used as both intramammary and injection form, so they're easily identified. And I have to stress they are used in very low amounts already, but we aim for a reduction of 50% by 2020. A silver lining for this initiative is having better data for farms to benchmark it themselves against with and also looking at cost of production and being more efficient. It's been a challenging process to actually get validated data but we succeeded in getting 100% of uh, producers to, uh, to get validated data together for 2016 and that showed a very encouraging picture of uh, low usage within the uh, 
the egg sector much lower than we'd, we'd, we'd actually appreciated. And uh, that is, that's both encouraging, but gives us probably an additional challenge going forward in that we have to look probably for other areas of, uh, of bird health and support to achieve further reductions. Our key target is expressed as percentage uh, medication days uh, because the bird is in production for a considerable amount of time. In 2016, when we, did, we got recorded data, validated recorded data together, we found that we had a very low figure, which was 0.73 medicated days per 100 days. Uh, going forward, we hope to be able to maintain or even reduce that, but it will be challenging because we'll have to look at other areas of uh, bird health and vaccination to achieve further reductions. The challenge we have in the game industry that we don't have any downward pressure from uh, retailers about reducing antibiotics and we didn't actually know how much we were using. We identified there was a problem between the client, the compounder and the vet and there was a shortcut going on and we actually put that right and that has given us a good 25% reduction in one go on compounded food. The results of implementing this have already kicked in in the 2017 rearing season. People have dropped, dropped stocking rates, they're using less antibiotics of course, they've got better biosecurity, at the end they've got hair, Customers are pleased with the product and, and, and they're also getting more money in the back pocket. It's, it's a win-win situation. To set our baseline, we've used two sets of data. Uh, the primary one is the VARS report from 2015, um, which is based on uh, sales of antibiotics and estimates made on the proportions of those sales that have gone into pigs. The Electronic Medicines book, which was begun a couple of years ago, um, has uh, been able to collect data from approximately 61% of the pig sector in the UK, uh, and that gives us another figure. Uh, so we use a start point as 2015 and a level based on those two data sets. The uh, principal challenge facing the pig sector is based on the fact that it is a high user of, of antibiotics. This is partly a reflection of the systems that we operate, continual production being a, a bedrock of, of pig production, uh, and the challenge is faced by a number of uh, endemic infections uh, that we, we are having to deal with. The key target that we will be aiming for within the pig sector will be to get the whole industry usage below 100 milligrams per kilogram PCU by the end of 2020. That will represent a reduction of approximately 63% on where we're starting from in 2015. It is as much uh, a, a drive that will push them towards improving the health of their pigs. Um, and that has raised awareness of programs to improve health. Uh, that includes investment in buildings. Um, and ultimately to be able to provide a product that suits the market.
The sheep sector's um, historically not had a very close relationship with the veterinary profession and that's something that we'd very much like to change for the benefit of the industry as a whole. Um, so it's really important on flocks that they have good preventative measures in place and that's um, sorting out all aspects of new nutrition, hygiene, um, usage of colostrum and the more we can focus on that the better we can have robust flocks um, and we're not relying on just treating sick animals. The sheep sector is quite a low user of antibiotics and we've um, concentrated not so much on how much we use but how we use it. So our targets um, focus more on hotspots areas. So either where we feel a large amount of antibiotics used such as for lameness um, or where a large number of animals have been treated. So for example in neonatal lambs as a preventative measure. I think starting the very first meeting with a professional facilitator was a great thing to do because it enabled everyone to understand what the process was, how difficult it was going to be, how challenging it was going to be, and the interaction as well as the mutual support uh, across the groups has been really good. Very often we found one sector finding a way forward for a different sector simply by looking at it with a fresh pair of eyes if you like, and overall it's been great. The Targets Task Force has been a really good exercise. Uh, not only has it brought all the sectors together, and actually there's a lot of commonality in the challenges we face, it's also actually made us all stand back and think and compare each other's challenges, and also it's helped us and it's given us the confidence actually to go out into our own sectors and say, look guys, this can be done, we can achieve these. My friends at home don't understand what I do, but I've got so much out of it and I've met some really impressive people and I think what we've done is very impressive. Working on this task force has been one of the most challenging things I've ever had to do in 35 years or more. It's been very enlightening working with other sectors um, to, to feed off their enthusiasm um, and uh, we are going to change the face of pig keeping in the UK.